So Jordan, apparently today we're talking about Will Ferrell's just bulbous man package and Iran. Yes, and specifically how it's so offensive to them that they're willing to invest in high-end CGI technology to hide set crotch. (laughs) Okay. I'm down for this. So Jordan, I'm confused about where Will Ferrell's package enters this conversation. So what is going on here? Yeah, so uh, the Iranian film industry is actually pretty robust. They make about the same number of movies a year as Britain does, as a point of comparison. And uh, so the Iranian people, they love movies and they love Western movies. And there was uh, a long time where the Iranian government wanted to keep all Western movies out. Um, And that was a lot easier, like in the 60s or whatever. But now everybody could just download whatever they want. So what they've decided to do is they're like, sure, you can watch Talladega Nights, but they've invested in CGI technology. So that, for example, in that movie, you can watch Talladega Nights in the theaters, but when Will Ferrell is running around with his crotch out, uh, when he thinks that he's on fire, um, they artificially raise the retaining wall so you can only really see his head so they're (laughs) they're using this advanced cgi technology just to hide will ferrell's package from the people lest they just be be, yeah but by um just the area as it's known and that weird kind of i don't even know if it's censorship because it's so hilariously like just poorly handled is really common when they're transferring movies from one market to another and it's handled with like varying degrees of success because i distinctly recall um, getting on a flight once, I think I was going to Dubai, and I watched that film where Ice Cube fights da- Charlie Day. Do you know the film? Right. Yeah, Fist Fight. It's the oh. only movie I ever walked out of the theater. Uh, um, I well, just didn't enjoy I was it. on a plane, so I didn't have that option. Yeah. My options were sit there and stare at the back of the seat, or right. um, watch that film, and I did, and they have a moment where Ice Cube is about to say the iconic Ice Cube line, fuck the police. But, right because I'm on a flight to Dubai, and Dubai has like different sensibilities to the West, uh, they censor it and just have him say, and I, I don't remember what it was, I wish I'd recorded it, because I was howling on the plane when it's just like, I disagree with the police, or something like that. <laughs> just, but obviously it was so poorly dubbed over, and it was obviously not Ice Cube, because I can't right. imagine Ice Cube would have agreed to censor himself, and especially that line, like one of his most right. famous quotes. But yeah, one of the things that's funny too about the way they use the the CGI. So like, you know, covering Will Ferrell's uh, impressive package is one thing. Yes. Um, but there are uh, other instances where men and women just aren't allowed to sit next to each other uh, because <laughs> men and women aren't allowed to touch, I suppose. And so um, they will artificially like separate them or in several cases, they actually just cut the female characters out of the movie entirely. Like that really sad cut someone did of The Last Jedi where they cut all the women out. Angry whiny <laughs> dudes just released a cut of the movie that had no women in it. And it's like, fucking hell. <laughs> That's one of the few oh. movies that got to Iran and they were like, oh, this is good. We don't have to change anything. And it's one of those things that you look at and go, if you're making decisions that are exactly in line with like an oppressive government agency, maybe you should re-examine what your priorities are. (laughs) Right. Yeah, but then speaking of Star Wars, there's like the um, Rise of Skywalker or whatever it was, where there's the lesbian kiss at the end that was so (laughs) obviously put in in like a cutaway shot they could cut out for foreign markets. And then lo and behold, they cut that kiss out for foreign markets. And then there's like posters and stuff for movies where they'll hide black characters from the movie regardless of how important they are to the story. And my favorite example of that is the film Black Panther. And for the Chinese version of that poster, they CGI the panther cowl onto Chadwick Boseman to hide the fact he's black in a movie called Black Panther, set in future Africa, starring like (laughs) all of Hollywood black royalty. Is that a government thing or is is that a marketing thing? Okay, I think it's just it's thing. just like a government thing where like they only allow like ten Western movies a year over there, or something like okay. that, and that you have like a bunch of hilarious um, uh, decisions made by Hollywood to kowtow to the Chinese government. Yeah. The best example of that being the remake of Red Dawn, um, where the bad guy oh, yeah. was originally going to be China, and then they realized, oh, we can't sell this movie in China if China is the bad guy. So they paid millions of dollars to CGI over all the Chinese flags with North Korean flags. Right. 
<laughs> and then dubbed over all the Chinese with Korean. But the really bad part is that they didn't hire any Korean actors. They used the same Asian actors for all the things. It's like, so this is somehow more racist because you're just saying that all the Asian people just, oh, Chinese people look like Korean people. So it's fine, no one will notice. It's like, what? And I would love to have been a fly on the wall um, at the premiere where the actors were in, who were in that film, like, you know, playing the bad guys, realized that they've been dubbed over with another language. And I was wondering, no, that movie did not get released in China. So they made oh, all those concessions all? for zero. They just based, and the best thing about Red Dawn is the film is about resisting an oppressive government trying to take over America and enforce its ideals on the United States. And the makers of that film bent over backwards to kowtow to the ideals of an oppressive government. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't write that. That's funny. You know, it's, it's interesting. I... Um... I took some film classes in college, and uh, one of the main, one of our classes, we we talked a lot about the movie Looper, um, mm -hmm. because you know, with uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Bruce Willis, uh, because somehow they they worked with a Chinese production company, and it was yes. a big deal because they worked with them just enough for it to qualify to play in China without uh, calling it a Western film. Yes. Like it, it, it was able to qualify as a localized movie, even though it's freaking Bruce Willis and Joseph Gordon-Levitt and like, like a British director, or no, it's an American director. It's like all American, except that technically, I, you know, I don't know, the, the have... guy holding the boom mic was Chinese or something. That's the film where they very obviously have a line that I, a Chinese censor told them to put in, where Joseph Gordon-Levitt's whole deal is, I want to go to France. I want to go to France, and his future self tells him, no, you need to go to China. Why? And from the future, China's where it's at in the future. China is a wonderland in the future. Who wouldn't <laughs> want to go to China? I'm from the future. You should go to China. I'm going to France. Right, and his uh, his future wife is, is Chinese, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So it's like... That's the impetus for this whole loop in the first place is that uh, his his wonderful wife is is killed somehow. Yeah, there's a lot of movies like this now where you can see like that whole uh, the the Great Wall or whatever with Matt Damon is just yes. another movie where they're like, all right, can we can we make a movie that'll qualify as a blockbuster but be localized enough that it doesn't count towards our quota in China? Or in some cases, they add extra scenes just to appease Chinese censors, such as in Iron Man 3, there's an entire sequence where Tony Stark goes to China to have his heart fixed by a top Chinese surgeon, I believe it's a cameo, <laughs> from a famous Chinese TV star, and that's only available in the Chinese release of that movie. And the, like, the subtle indication there is, oh, the best medicine in the world comes in China. Even Tony Stark, the great Tony Stark, has to go to China to get his heart fixed. And that's only available in the Chinese version. Bringing it back to Will Ferrell's package, because, you know, it's, it's, it's been looming in the background for a while. Like, what's the impetus of this? Like, why is his package so important to be covered? From why do they just cut the scene out? That's what I'm wondering. Like, why do they actually spend money to do this rather than just cut the scene? Well, because I, I think the the implication is that they know, you know, the the Iranian people have just a, a, a thirst for uh, his package. Will Ferrell. Yeah. Will Ferrell specifically, um, and so, you know, if they don't release the movie in theaters there, they're gonna find like the people are gonna find a way to to torrent it or steal it online. Okay. And so, the idea is they think more people will be protected from the crotch. Like, if it's in theaters, then they're like, whatever, I'll just go watch it in theaters. Mm -hmm. And it's not like they're going to be like, hey, I bet that movie had more Will Ferrell crotch. I'm going to go online and find it. They're just hoping that people are lazy enough that they're like, well, I saw the movie, even if I didn't get to see the crotch I was promised. Yeah, um, I didn't see the whole movie, but I saw most of it. And I just want to know how that feels to be Will Ferrell. Because imagine <laughs> you get a call from your agent and they're telling you, look, the film's going to be released in Iran. And it's like, oh, cool. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have to make some concessions. What kind of concessions? Well, unfortunately, we're going to have to do CGI a six-foot high wall in front of you to shield people from your yeah. impressive manhood and just overwhelming masculinity. I bet Will Ferrell was walking with an extra spring in his step that entire day he heard that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's much better than the alternative, which is like, uh, we're going to use CGI to make you look better because uh, audiences are, are all laughing at you. I think the more analogous one, too, is uh, there's a Kevin Bacon movie where he's naked for some... Maybe... I don't Hold remember what it was. Okay, yeah, and he... Uh, I believe they artificially... 
improved his package. Well, I actually um, did an article about this over on my website. According to the director, I believe it's Paul Verhoeven did that movie. Um, uh -huh. They scanned in, um, and I quote, every inch of Kevin Bacon's naked body, and they did no um, enhancement whatsoever. There was no enhancement <laughs> done, but uh, I think another one is um, Watchmen, uh, with the big oh. blue swinging dong, where yeah. Billy Crudup uh, was the facial actor and then the body actor, it was a professional bodybuilder. And Billy Crudup jokes in interviews, yeah, it's all the body is someone else, except for when you get below the waist, that's all me. And again, that's I want awesome. to be the actor who has to like, just sit there and talk about that. I'm like, is it true that to CGI <laughs> your penis to make it smaller because it was distracting? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, so that was like funny. Brandon Roof, didn't it? Superman, they had to CGI his penis because it was too big. <laughs> Because it was, and I quote, distractingly large on all the posters. <laughs> so they had to like um, smooth it over for the posters because it looked just too massive. One of the other funny things that Iran does also is, um, so even though they're willing to bring in a lot of things and censor it, mm -hmm. um, sometimes they just straight up remake things. One of the things they remade is Modern Family, uh, the show, which you can see how they can't just build like a retaining wall in front of the gay couple every time they come on screen. That would be um, amazing though. <laughs> just make it like that joke in that, what's, what's, what's the Tim, is it Home Improvement where his neighbor, you only ever see the top of his head? Yeah, exactly. We should have done yeah. that just all the time like, and just keep coming up with more farcical excuses for why you never see them on <laughs> screens. Like They're always moving a fridge into their apartment or something like that. So obviously that couple is no longer in the remake, but um, you're also not allowed to show any male-female relationships at all, regardless of age. And so there's a scene in the pilot where, in the American version, the mom walks mm -hmm. in and sees the, the daughter hanging out with a boy in her room, and she's she's nervous and, and kind of feels weird about it because she doesn't want her daughter hanging out with this, this yeah, boy in her sorry. room. And they kept the dialogue almost exactly the same in the Iranian version, except that instead of uh, a girl and a boy it's just two boys so it's just like the mom comes in and is like awkwardly trying to feel out what their relationship is in a show that's explicitly supposed to be cutting out gay characters it like is suddenly progressive again bring it back to superman that happened with one of the early serials where um like the teat was it the Hayes code you weren't allowed to show a man and a woman in bed together so they right. couldn't show Superman or Clark Kent waking up next to Lois Lane so what they do is they show him going down and having breakfast with Jimmy Olsen inadvertently suggesting that Superman was in a relationship with Jimmy Olsen and they shared a house? Uh, no. No, I don't think that. One of the articles I was reading about this is saying that Iran is kind of in that, in that like 60s, 50s era, in a sense, um, in that they've still got this Hayes Code uh, equivalent and they haven't moved past it yet. And even though they're making all these movies, they actually, a lot of the movies that Iran funds, like the government funds a ton mm -hmm. of these movies, are actually uh, based around sexual content. They're more, I don't know what the term is, like sexy. They're like soap opera type stuff. Um, it's like betrayals and people cheating on people and stuff. They're still willing to fund it. The only difference is uh, at you the end, everybody it. has to die. <laughs> right, they can't. <laughs> that's, I don't they like can't. That. that's a good twist. I want that in more movies. It's like slasher movies or whatever. It's like, we're gonna show a bunch of people having sex, but the but the penalty is you get stabbed to death by Jason or Jason's mom or whatever. That's the thing as well with those movies where, like, does Jason know that you're having sex? Does he watch? <laughs> that's the thing. Because that, it's like one of those things that's implied, but it's never explicitly stated. Does the serial killer watch? I think so. I think I think the implication is that he's mad about it. He's he's one of the earliest depictions of incels or something. Like he's just mad that people are having sex. Yeah, because he almost exclusively kills those type of people. I guess what we're saying is we want to see the Iranian version of Jason. <laughs> Another film untouched. They just release it because they're like, yeah, we agree with this. Yeah, everyone um, who shows any sort of immoral behavior immediately gets killed by a man wearing a mask. These changes are hilarious, but they're inadvertently bordering on the accidental creation of high art. They are elevating some of these scenes, like Talladega Nights, no one gives a crap. That's not a great movie by any stretch of the imagination, but that edited, censored version is so interesting because right. of how like, baffling some of those changes are. It makes it a better movie, and I would love to just see them get their hands on everything. Yeah, that's like, um, uh, yeah, Uganda has Wakaliwood, which is the, the like, they have this extremely low budget uh, action film like production team where they just, 
It's the worst CGI you've ever seen, but it's just it's just people that are excited to blow each other up and to make action movies. And so there, it's, it's so low budget, but it's just like you're watching some movie about the corrupt government or something, and then a guy walks in, and you, it's rocket launcher Jesus. Huh? And just like <laughs> says rocket launcher Jesus, and he just like shows up at the bottom because there's there's a couple of white guys that come too to help out, and it's oh. just they're incredible. Uh, that is the future of Hollywood right there. <laughs> Rocket launcher Jesus. <laughs>